and trends and common needs and goals and opportunities that they are faced with. And so many, com many companies in the automotive industry believe that if they just meet those challenges, they're going to have a seamless supply chain. They also think that those challenges are unique to them. But when, with all the companies that we work with across multiple industries, as you can see, many of their challenges are the same as in automotive. And the funny thing is that in both the automotive industry as well as other industries, some of the companies do a great job of managing their supply chain and building a seamless supply chain, while others really don't, and they fail at that effort. So maybe it's not just about meeting those common needs and objectives. But if it's not about that, if that's not going to be the secret sauce, what is the common denominator? Well. There's three things, in our opinion, that really make up the uh, building a seamless supply chain. Collaboration, innovation, and connectivity. These three components can be the common catalysts that really help you develop, implement, and execute a seamless supply chain. Collaboration, it's not about collaborating among your business partners. It's not about collaborating among the, just within your own department, within your own organization, or globally within your own business units. It's about collaborating both upstream and downstream in the supply chain. And not just with your suppliers, but with your supplier suppliers, and with their suppliers. The more information that you know about the total front end of the supply chain, all the way back to where the raw material is going to be dredged up from the earth, is critical to you really having all the details that you need to make the right decisions to react then and have a seamless supply chain. Similarly, it's not about just collaborating with the people that you ship your product to. That <coughs> might not be the end customer. You need to collaborate all the way forward to ensure that you are collaborating not with just the people that you ship to, but then also maybe to the distributors that they provide to, as well as to the final end customer. It's all about innovation. I already talked about the fact that you know innovation was the key, and if you didn't move the goalposts, that you could be left behind. Innovation is always looking for the next opportunity, the next new frontier, the next critical success factor that you could help develop or employ to leapfrog your competition and keep and maintain your company's position as the leader in your industry. And then finally, it's about connectivity. Connectivity isn't data. Data is information. Connectivity is about taking that information, sharing it with all of the people that you do business with, and within your own business so that people can make an informed decision about what to do with that information, about to what to do with that data. That's the, that is the critical nature of connectivity. So let me uh, give you a couple of quotes just to illustrate the importance of innovation. Here's the first one. I think there's a world market for about five computers. Who, who thinks they know who said that? It was a long time ago, it was before you guys were even thought of being conceived, so. <laughs> That's how long ago. Okay, so, that was Thomas Watson, the chairman of IBM, back in 1943. Unfortunately, they did, he did not see the vast amount of computers that there would be in the world today. Now, here's what's good about IBM. They innovated. They didn't just hang their hat on computers. Now they're not in computers, but today they're one of the best supply chain and consulting groups in the world. So they move their fence posts, move their goal posts to, to innovate, to be successful today. Here's another one. There's no reason for any individual to have a computer in their home. Who do you think said that? No, Bill Gates? No, it wasn't Bill Gates. So here's who it was. It was Ken Olson of Digital Equipment. Now here's what's unfortunate about them. They didn't innovate. Digital Equipment doesn't exist anymore. So here's a final one. 
There's no chance your iPhone's going to get any significant share of the, the smartphone market. <laughs> Who do you think said that one? <laughs> Who? <laughs> Microsoft. <laughs> Microsoft. Exactly right. Ah. Steve Ballmer. So that was right after they introduced the Vista operating system. You know, I gave that one. So, but Microsoft is innovating. Now, unfortunately, they're nowhere to be seen in the smart wor smartphone world today. So this just illustrates some of the importance of innovating, moving the goalposts, why it's critical if you're going to be successful in your, in your business. So let's talk about collaboration, OK? A little bit, a, a few other uh, comments about collaboration. How good you are at collaborating is going to determine how much you can control your supply chain and all of the necessary decisions related to your supply chain. Collaboration is the critical success factor for enabling uh, new business to come on board with your company. It's collaboration is the enabler that's going to allow you to see the new horizons to then be able to innovate. It's, it's going to be able to an example, it would, it would allow you to be able to see the civil unrest that's happening in Malaysia and the fact that you have a contract manufacturer in Malaysia that, that uh, or creates a, and fulfills a critical part for the smartphone that you're creating. And now you have to shift that distribution from Malaysia into Latin America in order to never miss a beat in your supply chain. That's the importance of collaborating and always knowing full and having full visibility to the, uh, the very end, very start, and very end of your supply chain. Clearly articulating your new business strategies, the new business strategies of your, your organization, the new markets you're going into, the new opportunities that you're pursuing, and sharing it with the organizations that have a mutual dependency on those same components is critical to helping you be successful. It's not just about taking the information, putting it into an access database, spitting out some numbers and making a decision. It's about collaborating to fully understand the full, the, the total impact of the decisions that you would make on the total supply chain and understanding what's going on with the rest of your supply chain supply chain and your partners so that you can make an informed decision about it. You can click again. So this is that, that was a good quote by the way. Yes. There it is. You don't need to be the smartest person in the world, just pick the smartest colleague. That's why Scott Orr works for me. Where is he? There he is. That's why Scott works for me. Okay, so let's talk about moving moving the goalposts as well. So moving the goalposts, you can pick it. One more, one more time. Sorry. That's all right. So, nope. nope. Back. Yeah, there you go. There Perfect. You go. So, innovation, as I mentioned earlier, it's not about just changing for change's sake. Instead, it's innovating to ensure that you are continue to be ahead of the competition. Don't worry about people stealing your ideas. If your ideas are any good, you'll have to ram them down people's throats, right? Because people are resistant to, resistant to change. Introduce new ideas identify new opportunities, innovate to ensure that you're always ahead of the competition, collaborate with your business partners, figure out what they're doing, look across other industries. Don't be stuck with a siloed type of approach and mentality to say, I can only look at the things that are occurring in my industry or my business segment. You always need to look elsewhere for innovative ideas as well. I was just devoted. Oh, you were demoted. I'm out of oh, job. That's not good. <laughs> so, so. Technology what? just replaced really? you. Know. <laughs> Look at that. And I was just talking about even with technology, you can't do things better. So, here's a good quote. Who do you think said this? My innovation involved taking an idea from the telecommunications and banking industry and applying that idea to transportation. Who do you think said that? I'm sorry. Okay. Well, you're exactly right. So <laughs> that was Fred Smith. Here's what he did. Back in 1973, he didn't invent some great pie in the sky idea. He looked at what telecommunications industry was doing as far as 
communication of information to their customers. You looked at what the banking industry was doing about sending checks. Remember when we used to write those things? You guys probably don't remember, but there are these little pads <laughs> that you have to write. And they would have to ship those from one location to another, sometimes in bulk, sometimes in eaches. He said, you know what? What if I was able to provide that service to them so they didn't have to do it on their own? What if I was able to provide the same technology and communication and, and uh, information to the end customer about how we ship your, your package? So obviously, Fred Smith took an idea, he innovated, and now FedEx is what it is today. If Fred had not innovated, FedEx would have never been created. But more importantly, if FedEx had not continue to innovate, we would still only be an express delivery carrier carrying letters. However, today we have freight shipments, ground shipments, ocean transportation, global distribution, warehousing and fulfillment operations, delivery to the home for customers, iPods, etc. Any questions so far? Yes. Yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, I have one more minute. Oh. <laughs> okay. So that's good. Connectivity, right? We talked about it again. It's moving, it, it's connecting to ensure that, that all of your company, all of your customers and your business have the right information to ensure success. It's not about just having data for data's sake. No data is worth a hill of beans until you take that information and you make a business decision with it. The data that you need is not having all the data. The data that you need is what's important to make your business decision. So in closing, collaboration, innovation, connectivity, the three what we believe are the critical components to building out a seamless supply chain to ensure success. So that is it. Do you guys have any Questions for me? I'll, here's a couple of other qu quotes that I'll just leave you with. So, do you guys have any questions for me that I can answer? Anything? Uh, we'll have a panel. Panel. Oh, panel never mind. Session. I'm getting kicked off. So, <laughs> oh, so thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much for Dave sharing with us. And uh, we like have, oh, please, please hold a sec, Dave. Oh. We have a small token for oh. you and for all the speakers today. Oh, great. It's, um, yeah, let me just show you how it's, it's, it's just a, a, a simple mug, but it's a magic mug. So if you, <laughs> it is, it's not just magic, it's about it's technology. Magic, magic mug. Yeah, we, <laughs> you oh, try it. When you pour hot, water, hot, hot tea or coffee in, and it will feature a photo of for you. So good. hope you all like it. Try very it. Good. This is well, heat thank sensitive. You. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks so much. So next we will introduce two speakers from IBM, Allison McFadden and Donnie Hay. So, a, a, a short brief introduction for both of them. Alice McFadden is the Director of Strategy and Business Development for IBM's Integrated Supply Chain, and she's currently responsible for leading the IBM Integrated Supply Chain strate Strategic Planning Mission and the commercialization of IBM supply chain assets. And Allison has over 10 years' experience in leading global team, and she joined IBM in 1999. She, one big thing, she's graduated from Purdue, so she's one of our proud Purdue alum. Mm -hmm. And Yay. And, Yay. Yeah. Yeah. and Donnie Hay, she's vice president of Smarter Supply Chain Analytics and Acquisition at IBM. So currently, she's responsible for building and de delivering the benefits with forming the organization. Before this role, she held multiple positions in I IBM as well. Donnie attended Michigan State University, earning her. Oh, okay. <laughs> Great. <laughs> exactly. She earned her bachelor degree in applied engineering and also attended college school, college, Kellogg School at uh, at Northwestern University. 
So this is our, as Dr Professor George has mentioned, this is our first time to yeah. have this conversation with you and <laughs> hope to can collaborate yeah. in the long term. Thank you. Thank you. Now let's welcome. Thank this you. For you. Do you want me to use this? Oh, no. You can use this I have this one. Exactly. Good. You can, and can I use, use this? this? Yes. And, and you this should be advances good to go. the slide? Yes. Yes. Perfect. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So thanks, everyone, for uh, having us here today. I was particularly excited about the topic. Uh, so when we saw technology-driven supply chain, I was like, well, that's perfect. Uh, we, have to, we have to go do this. Um, I am a Purdue undergrad, and I've just recently picked up sort of the focal point for Purdue in the supply chain, which is why we're kind of back on campus. I love being here. My family's still here, and uh, we bring Donnie because she's so wonderful, and we'll forgive her for uh, going to Michigan State. <laughs> <laughs> All right? And I'm excited to be in my home school. I live right next door to NC State, and I talk a lot at the IE school on campus because it's my uh, neighborhood. But they do the same thing when I come in. They give me a couple booze, you know. Like, you're not even from the ACC. Why are you here? <laughs> OK, today uh, I'm going to introduce Johnny. I'm going to give a bit of an overview about our supply chain organization, why technology and analytics is so important to us. Donnie's really our expert. She's going to talk about how we're using analytics in the supply chain. Uh, so hopefully most of you are familiar with IBM. Uh, we are a gigantic uh, information technology and business services company, over 425,000 employees. Um, our supply chain is about 20,000 people all around the world. Um, and it, probably half of our employees are outside of major markets. Um, we have a, gone through a journey. Uh, so as Dave was mentioning, we have kept innovating. This is one of our, our strengths at IBM. Uh, we like to tell our story you know, from going from a multinational organization, and this was pre-2000, where every country did things their own way, through the 2000s with Sam Palmasano, where we globally integrated our enterprise. And, and some of those innovations, connectivity, uh, data visibility, process streamlining can't be done if you're operating a silo. So through the, through the 2000s, we really focused on a, a common uh, global management system process. Uh, it returns huge economic benefit to the company. Uh, and that's one, th one of the fun, fun facts I'll talk about. But um, now we've been globally integrated for, for several years. And we're really focused on driving the uh, technology into the process to, to drive even more return. So the use of advanced analytics, hopefully you've all heard about Watson. Uh, Donnie will talk a little bit about cognitive analytics. Um, visibility, so supply chain. I think Dave called it connectivity. We call it supply chain visibility. We have a product um, that we're working on within the supply chain team. Uh, to, to drive that end-to-end -end visibility, dashboards, predictive alerts using analytics, risk management, uh, so natural disasters and things like that um, streamed into the tool as well. And uh, just a few kind of bullets on, on what, we, what we do or the scale. Uh, we do purchase everything for IBM in our procurement organization within supply chain. Uh, we buy about $55 billion for the company every year. Um, we also have about $20 billion that we purchase on behalf of other clients. So we run uh, other large companies' procurement operations for them, uh, which, is, which is very cool. Um, we have about $100 billion in cash that we collect. A, a quick note on uh, our supply chain organization, we do keep evolving. In the last year, we have actually picked up pre-sales support. So we now uh, operate every part of IBM's uh, process from quoting to clients. So we have a proposal center of excellence where we work with uh, our services, so GBS, GTS, and our consulting uh, businesses, our hardware business, our software businesses, to actually write proposals for clients. Uh, so we handle that transaction then all the way from the time that it's kind of a quote, not a real opportunity, to when it's won. We do the delivery, and then we collect the cash on the back end. So our supply chain scope at IBM is, is quite a bit broader than the traditional score model um, of supply chain. OK. Uh, one note before I introduce Donnie. Again, our analytics mission is very important to us. 
Um, we have now collaborations with a number of universities globally. Uh, we work with economic boards and governments to develop skills in uh, different regions. So like the EDB in Singapore, um, we interact with many industry groups and um, also clients. So we're, we're collaborating and we're learning from all these organizations uh, as we go. So we have some analytics collaborations going on with Honda and Boeing as well. Um, we had to introduce a structure. We felt we had to introduce a, a structure, and this has been several years ago now, to really drive the importance of analytics within the supply chain. And so Donnie Hay came on board about, she was with IBM, but she came into this role about three years ago. So she's the worldwide VP leadership for our analytics mission. And now she's gonna talk about uh, how we're structured and some of the things we're working on. Donnie? Great, thanks Allison. Mm -hmm. So the green boxes are my performance plan. <laughs> when, I, uh, when I came into the role, our general manager wanted to formalize a uh, mission around analytics I was charged with a, developing the strategy on how we were gonna deploy advanced analytics in the supply chain. We'd had ad hoc projects that had been developed over the years. We wanted to consolidate the advanced analytics modelers and then decide what areas of the business we were going to approach with advanced analytics and how we were going to prioritize those projects and fund them, et cetera. So we, we do the uh, strategic development. We also then are responsible for actually developing <coughs> the projects and deploying them. So in partnership with the guys that are responsible for the execution of the process and the transformation of the process. So uh, most of our projects that I will talk on about are actually the, uh, the tools, the analytic tools are embedded into the process. So you can do advanced analytics and look at kind of planning one-off studies, and those are very important. But what we typically do is actually develop a tool that gets used every day in, in the process. So um, not only is the math challenging, but probably the, the harder part is uh, getting buy-in you know, buy and, um, and actually a successful deployment in that daily execution process. So that's where we spend a, a lot of our energy. Um, I have a team of modelers that works for me around the world. I also, if, uh, if we're at max capacity, we'll leverage some other teams in the consulting arm that can do advanced analytics modeling. If, it is, um, if the pain point or the problem, the idea for a solution that we have can't be solved with known mathematics, I go see my colleagues in IBM Research. We have a very, very large uh, team of advanced, you know, of really leading edge um, um, mathematical sciences folks there that help us, and uh, they're a great partner for us in uh, taking, taking the application of advanced mathematics to, uh, to the next level. Um, the other parts of my job are to collaborate across the brands that so we work very extensively with the software group. We'll take uh, products that they have, try and use them um, and sh um, in applications for us. They actually take some of the tools and algorithms that we've developed and embed them in their solutions that they go to market with as well. And then uh, we have a team that will go out and actually meet with clients as our consulting arms will go out and work with clients um, if there's a subject area that we have the, the subject matter experts in, our team will go out and, and work with the consultants to help uh, the clients. We can kind of relate, you know, our quality engineers can relate to quality engineers, right? So um, it makes for a, a great partnership. Um, just a little bit about how we, we look at analytics. So again, starting with descriptive analytics, dashboarding, you know, knowing what happened, right? That's kind of the foundation. My team really focuses on predictive and prescriptive analytics. So once that you know what happened, what do you project then what will happen? That's the prescriptive phase or, or predictive phase. The prescriptive phase is now that I know what happened, now that I think I know what's going to happen, how am I gonna optimize based on that? What am I gonna tell the person collecting the cash to best go do with this particular client? What, what is the best next order to place, you know, to optimize the supply chain? So a combination of descriptive, predictive, and prescriptive analytics 
is really makes for a very, very, very powerful solution, especially when you, again, embed it into the process that people are running every day. Additionally, if you can extend it through your supply chains, so up three, upstream through your suppliers and your supplier suppliers, and then downstream through your distribution channel. The, uh, most of the analytics that we have today are founded on what we call structured data, numbers, right? The analytics of the future will not only leverage structured data, but unstructured data, text, image. So that's what we're working on now, in addition to the kind of the known mathematics is working with our colleagues in IBM Research and the IBM Watson Group on how to apply <laughs> cognitive analytics in the supply chain. So cognitive analytics, again, leveraging that unstructured data, right, uh, working to build algorithms that can give you responses back, you know, from a hypothesis, here's an answer back with, um, with a, a known probability, and then to work within the process to then learn, right? So this will be the future for us, in, uh, and we're very excited to be, you know, kind of thinking and working on the next proposal for cognitive analytics. Um, this is just a, um, an overview of the some more than 30 solutions that we have um, either implemented or extended or in development right now. Um, we'll talk about a few of these in, the, in, in a second, but I just show this to say we go across the whole enterprise process framework. So Allison mentioned that we not only support the, uh, our sales teams and our business partner teams and the pre-sales activities, we take the orders, do the traditional manufacturing, uh, procurement, manufacturing, distribution, but we do all the billing and then we collect all the cash. So that means we have uh, a great opportunity. There's lots of data out there <laughs> if you look at that, right? So lots of data, lots of pain points, lots of opportunities to optimize the supply chain from a productivity perspective, either expense or asset utilization and help our sellers to be more product, uh, productive and increase the top line. Along the way, as we've been on this journey, there's a few le uh, lessons learned. Some of them you learn the hard way. Those are probably the, the best lessons to learn. So um, I'd like to share with everybody kind of what we've learned in our uh, journey of developing these advanced analytics solutions. Number one, the folks that run the process and execute the process has, have to be ready to change, right? To use the advanced analytics tools. It's best if you start with a pain point that everybody can rally around. So again, we run a three in the box. In addition to myself, the vice president of transformation and the vice president of the operations unit on any one given project will review the status of the project on a regular <coughs> cadence. If, in fact, as we're going along in the project, we find that something isn't working, fine. If we're not gonna change the process to take advantage of it, fine. Let's just stop, go on to something else. Maybe in a year or two, we'll be ready to proceed and really leverage the tool. So, but it's important that, again, to make this successful, you kind of have everybody rallied around the pain point, what you're trying to do and agreeing to leverage uh, leverage the an advanced analytics solution once it's developed. Second, uh, developing an advanced analytics tool is very different than a typical IT project. Typical IT project, you spend a whole lot of time in advance writing the end user, you know, the requirements, then, you know, going through those requirements, and then doing the coding, and then doing, you know, and user tests, and then going back, and then, you know, and that, that can take a while, right? Any of you guys in business, you, can, you know, you've been through those, right? Best not to do that with, with advanced analytics tool. Get, get a little bit of money, run a proof of concept really fast. Take a brand, a geography, a little part of the business. Get with the, the guys who know, know the business, know that are the ones who are responsible for executing it, the guys responsible for transforming the process. And with your analytics team, spin a model, right? Then look at the output of that model. Go back and forth with the operations guys. Tune the model. Once you get it, it working, you know how you're gonna transform the process around it, 
then you can take that. Obviously, with that, you're going to have a business case, right? You can go forward and get, get the funding to then take it to the next level, take it to the next brand, take it to the next geography. I'm, I'm convinced if you do these fast cycles, right, you'll get, uh, you get much more, the models get better faster. And with that, then you have a much faster time to value. Incentive alignment, make sure that as you're doing an advanced analytics model, again, I said the guys who are going to use it, very important, right? Make sure that there's nothing in their management structure or how they are measured that's going to inhibit them from leveraging the output of the advanced analytics model. Also, if your, your model is being used across trading partners, either upstream with your suppliers or downstream with your, your distribution partners, make sure that you align the terms and conditions of how you do business with leveraging of that advanced analytics model. When money is flowing between companies, right, and you get agreement on those terms and conditions, then leveraging the tool becomes very, very powerful. Uh, I, um, I'm going to briefly talk about some of those uh, 30 tools that we have. This is a selection of tools that use a different mathematical techniques. They're used upstream, they're used downstream in, in the supply chain. They, um, they're used across trading partners and uh, about three of the five have actually been sold externally to multiple companies. Uh, the first one is uh, the quality early warning system. We um, along with our colleagues at IBM Research, have developed some uh, advanced algorithms <coughs> that help us find quality issues up to um, weeks and sometimes months in advance of normal statistical process control. So any QE knows, you know, knows SPC, right? These, these techniques will help you find issues with less you know, false positives um, than, than SPC. Um, so these, these algorithms, um, uh, and this chart is actually from a, uh, an external client, a Japanese automotive manufacturer who's actually leveraging this now. And these algorithms are going to go into uh, some of the software group products that we have that are just coming out. So again, ability to improve quality, find those issues much earlier uh, than normal. Quality, uh, the critical parts management tool, again, advanced anal analytics that allow us to go up, <coughs> upstream through four tiers of suppliers. So from silicon to chip to board to computer uh, to find mismatches in projected supply demands and send automated alerts upstream to say we've got an imbalance, we need to address this. Uh, the IBM by analysis tool goes downstream. We deployed this as a combination of you know, it's a web tool, uh, so descriptive analytics that the, our distributors around the globe, their people use, our people use the same format. We look at the same sets of data. We analyze based on what they're selling out, what they have on order, what they have in transit, and, and stocking levels that we want them to, uh, to stay within. We tell them what, the, what to buy every day, all right? And we put terms and conditions around that, such that if they stay within those mins and maxes that we set, we provide uh, price protection when we take price on servers. Uh, pricing analysis tool allows us, um, we're using in um, parts of our hardware business to, uh, to uh, look at all the deals that we have done, product, customer type, deal size, industry, et cetera. And uh, we know what wins, what loses, and we, uh, we tell, um, in some cases, we automatically tell the distributor based on a request that they have, we'll give them an authorized price based on this tool that sits behind a system of engagement and within seconds can give them an authorized transaction bid price. Um, and then the transparent supply chain, we're taking the smarter cities uh, set of suite of software product and actually using the integrated operations center behind that that people are using to run cities uh, to help us run our supply chain to increase visibility. So with that, um, 
again, supply chain transparency, we think incredibly important going forward in the future. Again, our transparent supply chain project is going to help us get visibility end to end, take all those various tools that are in each function, make them visible in mobile and web form. form. Um, and continuing to extend multi-enterprise, again, upstream, downstream, in an end-to-end -end fashion, and then uh, leveraging big data and analytics. So those are going to uh, be the cores of how we go forward in our smarter supply chain. So, did I come in? Utter <laughs> <laughs> time. Utter <laughs> time. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Donnie and Allison. Uh, we really appreciate you coming here for the first time. We really appreciate it, your talk and everything that you, you shared with us this morning. We still have some gifts, so don't run away. <laughs> there you go. It is cool. It's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now... Uh, here from our next speaker, um, Mr. Eric Schmidt. Eric is, uh, he has worked in Amway for about three years now, and now he currently holds the management of global procurement position, and he's the other Michigan State alum. Uh, <laughs> there you go. And uh, he received a bachelor's uh, from in supply chain and an MBA in supply chain and corporate finance. Uh, he has held many positions in supply chain throughout the years with Motorola, Gordon Food Services, and Ford Motor Company. We're really excited to have uh, Eric here with us. MOA, like Dr. J Dr. Shant Kumar has said, it's a great partner from the center. They have helped us uh, since the beginning, and they still help us with uh, general sponsorship or support to the GSM.